about to travel now and this week I have switched places. I am on the couch, Debbie is asking me the questions. Good morning. Good morning Mel. Well tourism in the communist Caribbean island nation of Cuba is growing and last year more than four and a half million people visited. Just a few weeks ago our very own Mel Homer added to those numbers. We've been itching to ask you all about it because we saw all your posts on Facebook. It Sorry. <laughs> no don't be because it did look amazing and we saw some of your pictures. Thank you for sharing them with us. So first of all I want to ask you why Cuba? What made you decide that? Oh you're welcome. Why Cuba? Well it's, it's been somewhere I've wanted to go for ages and I thought there was a, a revolution in the 50s so obviously a little bit of history. Cuba w went through many revolutions but this revolution in 59 which meant that the, there were sanctions put on it from the United States so it's almost like a little time warp with the 1950s cars. Everyone knows about that. Then there's a lot of larders as well because they were under Russia's protection. That fell apart and they still survived and kept going. Those sanctions are being lifted, but it's still quite raw and real. And I wanted to get there before it got spoiled. Wow, cool. It does sound amazing. So was it easy to get to from New Zealand? It was surprisingly easy. I, I thought it would be more difficult. Uh, we went through LA into Miami. And then from Miami, it's just a hop down 45 minute trip flight down to Cuba. You can also get your visa. I was talking to somebody before I left and they were saying, have you not got your visas? I had to go to Wellington to get my visa and so I panicked slightly. No, we got our visa at Miami at the gate as we were getting on to the plane. It's right there, it's very simple. You pay 100 bucks US and you can go. There are slightly few more restrictions going through the states. You can go through South America. There were flights coming in from Europe, lots of states, lots of different cities in the states. You can get there from a lot of places now. Easier than I thought. Good, good. Okay, so first impressions of Cuba was it what you expected when you got there? It was actually one thing about Cuba getting in from the States you can't go as a tourist you have to go you have to select something and I supported in support of the Cuban people that's that was my reason for going. Uh, it, it, we got to the airport and it's quite a dated airport it really is uh, it's sort of quite old school but you walk out of the airport and the first thing I saw there was these 1950s cars because you hear about Cuba and these well preserved 1950s Chevys and that is what you see on the roads a lot of them as I said a lot of Ladas as well uh, there are new cars as well but predominantly it's these 50s cars a lot of them are being used for taxis now but a lot of them are still very old and very uh, the whole family is in the back there Another thing is the music. Everywhere you walk down these little narrow cobbled streets in the old town of Havana, you hear music, you hear bands, you hear this incredible Cuban music. They are very musical and it's just wonderful. Uh, we stayed in the old part of Havana, which is all cobbled streets, but then literally two streets over, it's, some of it's done up, the two streets over, it's still very ruined, still very raw. Um, people were beautiful though, it was just so great. But the experience, I think, the first things I really thought about was the music and I think the, the, the cars and just the fact that we were in Cuba and it had been like a dream for so long and we were actually finally there. Yeah, amazing. And those cars you mentioned, was that easy to get around? That's the form of transport you were using mostly? Yes, yeah. uh, we did use that. That's our taxi. Fernando was our driver. Wow. He'd installed aircon in that, which I'll tell you what was really good. We went from Havana to another town called Trinidad de Cuba in that, which is about four and a half hours away. And uh, that is us parked outside a little doctor's place, which I will tell you about a little bit later on because that was an extraordinary experience. Uh, there's not a lot of public transport. In fact, on the roads out of Cuba, we did see uh, there's uh, groups of people standing on the side of the road and we said to our guide well what are they doing and he said they'll stand there and then eventually a government official will come along and they will actually stop government cars and say where are you going oh, are you going to this this province can you take this person and they put people into the cars oh wow okay and that's how they get around horse and cart there were little rickshaws in Havana itself but the taxis that was definitely the way to go oh wow okay. definitely the way to go so you touched on experiences before what were your favorite experiences what did you do over there in Cuba. We did so much. I think I should talk a little bit about where we stayed because okay. we stayed in Cuba. There are big hotels that are run by the government but we stayed, most people stay in Casa Particulars which are people's houses. You stay in somebody's houses. The first place we stayed was in a room off the old square in Havana and it, all of the all of the houses have these big beautiful courtyards because it was a Spanish style to keep the to keep the coolness through and we stayed in a room off somebody's lounge room. Now that sounds a bit weird. It's not. We had our own bathroom. We had air con. They were friendly. They made us breakfast. They showed us sort of the things of what we needed to do and where we could go. All sorts of things. It sounds like you think I'm in somebody's houses. Isn't that strange? It's not. <laughs> 
not at all. It's absolutely glorious. Casa Particulars is definitely the way to go, uh, and they give you so much local knowledge. It's incredible. Did you have dinner at somebody's house that you hadn't met before? Dinner at Anna's? Oh, was yeah, we it? did. Anna's, I'll tell you about in just a sec, but I have to tell you for just a sec, she says. <laughs> uh, we say that Casa Particulars, where they will make you dinner, they will make you breakfast, all sorts of things. Uh, wi Fi, though, if you are trying to book your Casa Particular from New Zealand, mm. they don't have very good Wi Fi in Cuba, so you do need to watch out that it could take days or weeks to get back to you. Uh, you can get your Wi Fi card by lining up outside a telecom shop and then some some public squares have it others don't uh, and you have to say at the end this is the tip ultimo when you get to a line because they don't queue in Cuba they just gather and you get into a line you say ultimo which means I'm the last person now and so the next person knows that you're the last but when they come and they ask the same thing you say yeah that's me I'm last so they know they're behind you oh cool uh, we did have dinner in a place called Trinidad Tobago a uh, Trinidad De Cuba, which is a town of about 50,000 people, about four and a half hours from Trin uh, from Havana. Yeah. And in this town, UNESCO protected town square, cobbled streets. Our guide, John Elvis, whose brother was Elvis and his other brother was Joe Elvis. His <laughs> father really liked Elvis. He told us about this woman that he knew, Anna. Anna was a solo mum and she had started up a restaurant on the roof of her house. And we found it in the old town. We went there and it was one of the best meals we had because the food in Cuba, it's pretty plain. There wow, we are overlooking the gorgeous. old town. She was lovely uh, and it's called Anna's Place. You ask for Anna's Place and people will show you where to go. It was one of those experiences where you just go and meet the people and they're so warm and so friendly and I found my new favourite coffee which is a Cotardo which is a, it's like an espresso with a dash of milk. I would recommend to everybody that you go there with your family. I think it's pretty easy to get around and you would have just the most amazing time. Just one hint though, uh, the toilet's doors are about this high oh. and they're like saloon styles, get used to that. <laughs> and we did also go to up into the hills with our guide John Elvis, he took us winding into the hills to a small house that had a concrete floor, a little shack where they grew coffee. He'd grown up with these people and he just wanted us to visit them and that's all, he just wanted to say this is how we live, these are our people and we did and they were wonderful and it was such a great experience. Amazing, I'm going to have to book my own trip there, you've sold me. Yeah, I, it'll live with me forever, it was just wonderful. Oh gorgeous, thank you so much for telling us all about it. Could go on all day. I, we've me. been talking about, we've been wanting to ask you for so long, so it's amazing. Uh, it sounds like Cuba is well worth adding to your wish list. So I will be staying closer to home next week, though, when I'm back on Travel Couch. Um, some of New Zealand's best but least known dock campsites, as recommended by dock rangers. So join me then. I'm really looking forward to that. I can show you all the rest of my photos too later. <laughs>